Let's get into the into the word this morning. Um, we have Vision Sunday coming up here at the end of the month, and uh, let me uh, just describe to you what Vision Sunday is about. It is a day that we uh, set aside to uh, specifically. Uh, we do it in two two ways. We give we encourage you to uh, from now until then, and that's why I try to preach a few. We get two Sundays here this Sunday and next Sunday, and then the Sunday after is Vision Sunday. And that gives me time to preach the Word into you, get faith built up into you, get your mind and your hearts moving in that direction. And so we give you a, a uh, vision list, and uh, we have the, the 2019 vision list up here, so our usherette will pass them out here uh, when you need them or uh, so that you can uh, take them home. But you need to pick up your last year's vision list and start to give God thanks for what He's done. And start acknowledging what He has already done and what the mark-offs are, what you've marked off your vision list. So we do, we do three areas in, on our vision list. The, the first area is what we want to give into the kingdom of God. What amount, we, we set an amount of what we want to give over the entire year into the kingdom of God. And, you know, uh, these things don't, we don't do, we don't enter into these things lightly. We don't, just flippantly like go, well, whatever, we'll, you know, some amount. And we, we spend time in prayer. We get together with our family and our spouse and our children and we take some time and we pray over these things so that we can find out what is it the Lord has for us to do this year and what does He want us to put into the kingdom of God and what's in our heart. You know, the Word says that, um, Trying to remember the scripture, uh, 2 Corinthians 9, something, something, something. I think it's uh, 6 or 7 or 8 or 9 or somewhere right in there. Um, but it, uh, it says, as, as it is in your heart, what, what, what is in your heart to give, give. And so Paul was being specific, like, it's not some magical thing. It's not like some, you know, uh, big light comes on, you know, as you're driving to church and, and God gives you a sign telling you how much to put in the offering. No, He is in your heart. He is moving you to move up and to grow and to develop. And in that, one way in that is financially. And so we know that what in the in the giving into the kingdom is that we give God access into our life by sowing into the kingdom. So we find out uh, what do you do? You know, the, the question on the, on your vision list is what do you desire to give into the kingdom of God in 2019? It's just a dollar amount. And so you may calculate that as 10% of your income. I want to give my tithe. And for some people, that's a place we got to start. That's ground zero. That's the beginning step. That's first step in giving into the kingdom of God. But it's always been a desire in my heart to be a 30% giver. I've been saying that for quite a while and I'm keep moving up and I'm getting there you know we keep moving up to that and uh, every year we keep increasing and it, and it's I wish I had that unfailing unwavering faith to just jump into that wholeheartedly all at one time um, but I haven't had it yet and I know that there's going to come a day when when I'll hit that 30 percent tithing you know 30 percent giving mark and I'll be okay let's what's next and you know okay I, I want to get to 50 percent well we're going to just keep incrementally getting there and keep moving up to what God wants us to do. All right, the second area on our uh, vision list is making a list of our debts and obligations. And why do we do that? Well, do you want to get rid of them? I mean, that's a simple question. And, of course, everybody says, of course, I want to get out of debt. I want to get rid of these payments that I have. I want to get rid of my car payment, my loan, my home, my mortgage, my whatever. I want to get out of debt. Well, you're not going to get out of it just ignoring the debts you have. You've got to make a list of them. You've got to come to the knowledge of what your debts are. And, and we give you a, a simple thing. You, you list who the, who the lender is, what the payment, monthly payment is, what the interest rate is. Because if you don't know the interest rate, you don't know how much you're, you're really, it's, it's hurting you, how much it's costing you to carry that debt. And then the last thing is, what does it pay off? What's the payoff of that loan? If I were just to walk in and just write a check for the total amount, what could I pay it off with? And so we list those and then we total them up. And now we know 
what is the total of my debts and obligations that I have, and wh what is it going to take to get me out of debt. And then we wrap our faith around that. And we present it to God and we say, Lord, we're believing that you're going to help us reduce and eliminate our debts. That's part of our uh, offering declaration is that our debts are being reduced and eliminated. And so we got to get faith involved in that. We got to get our, we got to get our expectation up that we expect that God will intervene and help us in that area. And by doing our, our, you know, our vision, uh, 2019, you know, our vision Sunday is that's what we do. We make this list up. And we hold it up before God and we declare these things according to His Word. We pray over them and we, and, and we believe that He's going to uh, give us the way. Do we know how that's going to happen? How is He going to get us out of debt? Because we look at that and we go, that's impossible. I'm never going to get out of debt. You know, if, if I, I can barely make the minimum payment, how am I, and it keeps, you know, every month I get further and further behind. Well, how, how do I get out of that? Not for us to know, it's for us to believe. We're not to know the way, know the path, know the, the process that God's going to use because He has a thousand and one ways to get you out of debt. All you need is one. And He has uh, infinite knowledge and understanding of all the stuff behind the scenes that you have no clue of. That's how God operates. That's how He gets you uh, out of these obligations and debts and into abundance in your life. And you, and so, you know, getting out of debt is kind of a, a, a first step process, but at the same time, he's working you into an abundant life of provision and everything that you have need of. So we list our obligations and we list them. Then the third thing is, what do you want or to do if money was of no consequence, of no uh, significance to you? If money meant nothing to you, it didn't matter how much it cost or how much it took to do it, what do you want and what do you want to do? And we make a list of those. It's not our wish list. It's not our Christmas list. It's our faith list. It's what we're believing God for. And if we, uh, you know, I think there's uh, eight lines there. I, I, I reversed the number of these from last year. Last year we had eight debts and six what we would want what we want and what we want to have and, and or to do. And so I reversed them the, the opposite way. Just something in me went, that's got to get, we got to start getting those things turned upside down. We need to get, get our, our obligations reduced and our, the things that we're believing for and, and, uh, the things we want and the things we want to do. We got to get them increased because God wants us to dream big. So today I wanted to talk to you about vision and get your faith built up for this. So take your, your vision list home, get out your old one from last year, you know, pray over it, go over it, see what God's done for you, give Him thanks and praise for that, and then start to uh, inquire of the Lord what He has for you, what He wants you to do, what He wants, um, you know, what is it that He has for you in the future? What does He have for you? So let's, uh, let's get started. I, I, Turn my notes upside down here. Let me get my page up here. Um, you know, the the first question is, well, what is a vision? If I'm to have a vision for my life, so what is that? What does that what does that mean? What does that look like? the 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 best way to describe a vision is a very clear, very crystal clear, very concise mental image of your future. That's what a vision is. What do I see myself doing? What do I see myself being? What do I see myself having in the future? I may not, I do not have it now. I don't, I'm not doing it now, but what is a vision? It is a crystal clear vision, a crystal clear, uh, what you see yourself doing and being. So let's say I'm driving an old beater car, you know, that's just, all falling apart, you know, Novi's wouldn't even take it. That's our local uh, scrapyard. You know, they would take it, but they're not going to give you anything for it, you know. It, you know, they would give you half a scrap value because it's just so much rust on it and it's just so bad a shape. It's like, it's, it's really not worth anything. Well, what's my vision? My vision is to have a better used car. Well, I can tell you what God's vision is for you. He wants you in a new car and a 
you know, not just a, a Pinto. You remember the old Pintos? Um, you know, they were like the cheapest. They would be like, what would be equivalent today? A Yugo? No. I don't think there is anything that's built that poorly and is that junky of a car brand new. I don't, I don't think the, uh, safety standards, you couldn't build one that bad today. You know what I mean? The safety, the government safety standards that require automobile operator, automobile manufacturers to build a car to certain standards, they couldn't build a car that bad. So, um, you know, but what does God want for us? Well, He has a big vision. He has a big dream for you that where He wants you to go. He has, He's seeing things that you can't even think or imagine. And we've got to get on His page. We got to start catching up to Him. And that's why we got to take these things and pray over them. And not just come up with your own wish list because what you're going to find is what you would like, what you think is possible, what you think is, well, I could probably get to here. That is so low, so minor, so baseline that, that God's like, come on, come on up. Come on up to where I want you to be. You know, He wants us to have good things and He wants us to, to live in the best house in town. He wants us to drive the best vehicles. He wants us to, have the best relationships, the best marriages, the best, you know, all that stuff. And, and it's available to us if we'll believe it and receive it. That simple. Same way we get salvation. All right. Um, so what is a vision? It is a crystal clear mental image. It's... Um, the, remember when we were kids and, and people would ask you, well, what do you want to be when you grow up? Well, I'm asking you that today because I, I feel like I'm still haven't grown up yet. I, st- I got a long way to grow to growing up. And you know, now, come on, don't be amen me that strong because um, because I can be a little zany and, cry- and childish. But um, you know, it's like, what do I want to be when I grow up in Christ? When I when my faith grows to a to a greater level? When I, when I you know just in, uh, grow up in the kingdom of God. What do I want to be when I grow up? What do I want to have when I grow up? What do I want to do and accomplish? What, what is, what do I see my life being like? So that's what, that's my question to you. What do you want to be when you grow up? All right. Do you see it? You've got to see it before you see it. You've got to see it with the eyes of faith before you see it with your physical, tangible eyes. Before you can taste it, see it, feel it, touch it you know, all the five senses, before you can do all that, you've got to see it with your faith, with the eye of faith of what, what you're going to have. Let's go to Habakkuk 2 and verse 3. I'll just, I'll just do it. All. We're going to look at it in three different uh, Bible translations. Uh, we're going to look at it in the New King James first here. Habakkuk 2 and verse 3 says, For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak. It will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. So, the, a, a vision speaks for itself. It says, for a vision is yet for an appointed time, but it, at the end it will speak, it, and it will not lie. So, a vision is something that will come to pass and then it will declare something. It will speak something. A vision is a, a, a an end result. It's what we want to see at the end. So we got to start with our vision. Our vision, we got to start with the end in mind, with the end result, what it looks like at the end. That's the best way to um, set goals, to set, you know, to, to do our vision stuff that we're talking about here is to start at the end and then work backwards. And it, it, it's like, uh, it's the way I would like to do math, is to start with the answer and then work backwards through the problem, because then the problem becomes very easy. If I know the answer, I can make the equation come out to the answer. Well, if I know the answer, if I know the answer of life, or I know the answer of what I'm what, what God wants for me and what He desires for me and what I see in my future, then my daily life from now till then, I can, I can, you know, uh, work the formula so that it comes out to what I'm having. 
to what I, what I want to have and what God wants for me. So it's like if you have no vision and you have no future, then it's just life becomes mundane. It just becomes getting up every day, going to work, coming home, watching a little TV, going to bed, getting up, going to work. You know, It's just that same cycle every day, just that same routine. It becomes humdrum and, and boring. But if I know a vision, if I have a vision, and I know where God wants me to get to, and I'm, and I'm working to get there, then I can, um, not only can I start doing the things that I need to do, but now my angels, my ministering spirits, the Spirit of God, can start to work to accomplish those things. And, and it's all things start to fit together and start working towards that end. Um, it's like a, you know, the uh, transformers, the go-go gadgets, the, all that kind of stuff. If I know what I need, I can transform into that and get there. You know, it's, it's like, but if I don't know where I'm going and what I'm, what I'm believing for, then anything looks good. You know, anything works because I'm just kind of plodding along. I'm just kind of not getting any, not, I don't have anywhere to go. So going anywhere where it seems like it's, um, successful. You know, like, how do I know I'm successful if I don't know what the, the end result is? You gotta have, you know, like, we just had Super Bowl last week. Well, how do we know who was successful in that game? It was the number of points on the scoreboard. Nothing else told us anything. It wasn't about all the stats of passing yards and completions and, you know, running yards and who had the least amount of penalties and, you know, just all those stats that a lot of times you can say, well, this team was better because they had better stats. There's a lot of times that the team with the worst stats actually wins the game because it's the score on the scoreboard. It's the number of points scored that matter and nothing else. That's the only thing that is going to give us success. So what's the score? What's, what's the, what's the end result? What's, what are we looking for? And we need to know that so that we can be working towards it. All right. Uh, let's go, let's look at this in the New Living Translation, Habakkuk 2 and verse 3 out of the New Living Translation tells us the vision is for a future time. That's what vision is about. It's about your future. It's not about today or tomorrow. You gotta stop, stop living your life by the week or by the month. Start living your life by years and decades. What am I going to be 10 years from now? What do I want to have 10 years from now? What do I want to do and accomplish within the kingdom of God in, in, in time, in, in a larger portion of time from now? Not, well, I, I want to get to work, you know, tomorrow. Tomorrow's Monday, so I got to get up and go to work. Yes, those are things we got to do every day, but I want to, I want to know that the things I'm doing today are going to get me where I want to go years and decades from now. Okay, the vision is for a future time. It describes the end. That's what vision does. It describes the end. It's a crystal clear vision, a description of the end. And it will be fulfilled. That is an, is a, um, an encouragement that we need to understand that if we have a vision, it will be fulfilled. It's not just a pipe dream. It's not just, boy, I sure hope so. No, vision is, is seeing what God sees, and if we can see that, we can get there, and we know that we will have it. Not that we might have it, not that, well, hopefully somehow it will all work out. If God's will, if it's, you know, if He wills it, if it's what He wants for me, then it will happen. No, you've got to push your faith into it and receive what He has. He already has it planned out. He already has it provided for you. He's already given, you know, made all the provision for it. You need to receive it, believe it, and receive it. All right. And it will be fulfilled. It is, if it seems slow in coming, wait patiently, for it will surely take place. It will not be delayed. This, this is, uh, the, the biggest thing that we have to do as believers is to learn, number one, to keep our mouth shut. Don't start talking doubt and unbelief like, oh, it's never going to happen. How is this ever going to happen? Why can't I get this done? What's, what's going wrong? No, it will happen. 
we need to keep our mouth and gear in, you know, engaged in faith and declaring what God's declared, still seeing what God sees and, and keeping the faith there. But the one thing is that we got to have the, the, uh, the fortitude, the patience to believe, to wait for it, to believe for it. Waiting is one thing Americans don't do well. We don't wait for nothing. We want drive through now. We want, you know, we want order it on Amazon and have it delivered. It better come at least two days. I mean, if two days, that's ridiculous. It should be there the next day. You know, I mean, that's what we think. I mean, we've, we've come to this place where we're standing there waiting for the microwave, like, come on, come on, come on, come on. I gotta, I'm binging on Netflix. I can't be waiting here for popcorn. Let's go, you know, get this done. And I mean, we, we have no, we have zero patience for anything. And yet God has put in us this, um, put in the, the kingdom, the way the kingdom works is that diligence, uh, not losing heart, patience, trusting Him, that's all part of the equation. Because in that, it's the journey of getting there that is important to God. The stuff at the end is not so important to Him other than, yes, He wants us to have it because He wants to bless us. But it's what it makes of us while we're getting there. That's what's important. So the patience, the time waiting for it is not wasted time. It's not God dragging His feet. It's not Him trying to... uh, uh, trick us and trying to, you know, play games with us like, ooh, you know, like put it at the end, like a carrot at the end of the stick, like, come on, come on, come on, it's coming, it's coming, you know, just taunting us along. That's not the way God operates. God operates in abundance with, with blessing for us. Okay, let's, uh, we gotta wait patiently. Let's go into the, uh, what is it, the message version of this verse here. We're still in Habakkuk 2, 3, and we're in the message version. It says the vision, the message, is a witness pointing to what's coming. I, I didn't read that real very clearly, but let me try it again. He says the vision message is a witness pointing to what's coming. That's what the vision is. It's pointing to what God has coming down the road to you. What is in the pipeline coming to you. is That's what the vision is. It's seeing what God has coming to you. It, it aches for the coming. It can hardly wait. That, that's one thing we gotta understand. That God's not, not, um, putting these desires and these vision into us and then going, well, if I get around to it, you know, next year we'll get around to giving you that, you know, we're working on that. No, he, he's anticipating this. He's, he's like a little kid at Christmas, like, he just can't wait to give the gift. You know what I mean? A kid at Christmas can't wait to get the gift, but God is the one who just is in so much anticipation to give it. He's doing everything He can, working within our faith and within our believing, within our receiving, to to get it to us. And He's like, He can hardly wait. And it doesn't lie. The vision never lies. The vision that God will put in you, when you, the vision is not something in your intellectual head because it will never make sense. Like, how could that ever be? The vision God gives you is so big and so great and so, like, you're kidding me. That's never going to, how, what? No way. You know, that's that's the right words and the phrases we use. Like, that can't be. And yet, it does not lie. That vision that God puts in you is true. It's accurate. It's specific. It's crystal clear. And we've got to wrap our faith around it and receive it. Okay. And it doesn't lie. If it seems slow in coming, wait. It's on its way. It will come right on time. Now, I'm going to tell you a story. Some people we know, they were believing for a specific vehicle, and they had had on their vision list multiple vehicles over many years, decades, and they were believing for a specific luxury car. It's a Bentley. If you, They're a handmade, awesome car. Brand new one, three, four hundred thousand, and over over two hundred thousand, I think. I'm trying to remember what it, what they what they are priced at. Crazy amount of price, but they just was in their heart, in their you know, like they had a vision for that, and and it went on for year after year after year on their vision list. They kept carrying it over, and they were waiting. They were being patient. 
They knew it was coming because God had put that vision in their heart. And when it came, it came like out of the blue. There was a um, a used one with pr- practically no miles on it, pristine, not a mark on it, absolutely brand new, in essence brand new. And it was at a Ford dealership, I believe, but a dealership of some kind. And I don't think they knew what they had because they had it listed for like under $50,000. And they're like, something's wrong. So they make the call, can you know, and it's several states away. And, you know, all this end up getting the car. And that's a mark off off their vision list that they were believing for something. In their minds, when they put that on their vision list 10, whatever, 15 years prior, they're like, how could that ever happen? We could never afford a multiple hundred thousand dollar vehicle. How could that ever happen? Well, that's the kind of vision God puts in you because he's not worried about, it's not about the car that they got. It was about the journey of faith that they went through. That patience of diligently staying in faith over time that God developed in their heart a trust and a reliance on him. That's what it's all about. And that's what this whole vision list stuff is all about. And that we can rely and trust on Him. And when we do, He keeps bringing us up to the next level, the next, uh, the next, um, you know, it's like increasing our capacity of faith. Like we, have, we, God gives us a measure of faith, but it's what we do with that that we increase the capacity of that. So when, when, we, when we first start out, we have a capacity for socks. You know what I mean? And then we have capacity for a pair of pants. And then we have a capacity for a suit. And we have a capacity for a whole wardrobe. And we have, you know, just that, that, that capacity of faith just keeps increasing and increasing. You know, maybe we, we're, we're like a little kid. He has the capacity to believe for a bicycle. But then it's time that now, you know, he wants something with keys and, you know, wheels and engine and fumes. And, you know, he wants something that can, you know, do some speed. So now his, his, his faith is for a vehicle and, and for a car. And so, you know, his, his faith just got to keep building. But when you get a good, a nice, good used car, is that it? Is that all the, all the, is that as good as God can get? Can he get as, is that all the good he can get? A Chevrolet, low mileage, used car good? No. He can be Cadillac, Lincoln, Bentley, Rolls Royce. You just keep going up the list. He can be that good. To, to bless you, but you got to get your faith in line to, to do that. It's that process that he's worried about. He's worried about the condition of our heart, that our heart is seeking after him as, as our provider, as our Lord and Savior, as our, our uh, you know, the God of the, our El Shaddai, the God of more than enough. All right. Let's see. Where are we going for here? Oh, as I said, get a vision. This is what's next on my list, but we've already gone over it. It says, get a vision, start with the end, and get crystal clear about your vision. you got to get it crystal clear in you. Go, let's back up to Habakkuk 2.2. 2. We've been looking at Habakkuk 2.3 here in a couple versions. Let's just look at it. Habakkuk 2.2 2. in the New King James Version. It says, then the Lord answered and, and answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain on tablets that you may that he may run who reads it. So this verse is is very clear. What do we do with a vision? What do we do with a vision? When we get a vision from God, what do we do with it? Is that we have to first of all have a vision, get a vision. Should be a should be a you know got milk, you know got vision. What's your vision? That's why we do this so that you can write it down on your vision list. Get your vision, write it down, make it plain, make it simple, make it understandable, make it readable, make it not vague, a new car. That's too vague. What make, model, color, you know, the whole nine yards. What do you want? What are you believing God for? What's the vision He's placed in you? Um, I don't know why I'm talking about cars so much this morning, but it's a good example. It's not the only thing that we put on our vision list. It's just a good example for it. All right. The 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 other the the with vision, I, I want to encourage you to 
you've got to use your imagination. Remember when you were a kid and the cardboard box could be anything? You know what I mean? You could make anything out of that cardboard box. It could be a fort, it could be a car, it could be an airplane, it could be anything, that box. It's all because of your imagination. And God didn't take that imagination out of us, you know, like, well, I grew up, I'm not a child anymore. And so, you know, no, that imagination is still in you. But you've got to use it. You've got to cultivate it. You've got to develop your imagination because your imagination sees the impossible. It sees things that don't make sense, that don't add up, that don't, in, in, in our realm of, of um, you know, what, what's the word I want? Physics, you know, that, that certain, you know, the laws of physics, the laws of nature. Imagination doesn't, is no, has not restricted by those things. And neither is the vision of God. He is not restricted by what the normal, conventional wisdom of man is. He is not limited by that. He is beyond that and, and supersedes that. Okay, what can you see? You gotta use your imagination. You gotta, what are you seeing? What do you see out there beyond the reality, beyond the, the checkbook, beyond the what is possible? What can I do? What do you see out there? What, use your imagination to see way beyond where, what, what is seemingly possible. All right. Remember God told Abraham when he took Abraham from his family and took him out into the, into the wilderness and, and God got him to a place and I'm assuming he got him to an elevated place and he, and he says to him, what you're, what you can see is yours. What you can see is yours. Well, it's all up to Abraham. Can he see the top of the mountain or the top of the hill where he's standing? Can he see all the way down the hill? Can he see all the way to the next hill? Can he see, see that mountain that's peeking out back there? You can just, you can just see an edge of that mountain that's behind the other mountain. What, where, what does he see? God sees way beyond that one. You know what I mean? But Abraham's got to say, well, I can see with my physical eyes, I can see this far, but I know that there's more beyond that. That's the eye of faith. And Abraham saw by faith that his inheritance from the Lord was, was an infinite number of offspring, of children, of, and we're in that number. You know, if we are born again, then we are a, children of Abraham. We are his inheritance. We are offspring. And so every child, that, every person, every individual that comes to, comes to God and comes to, to the knowledge of Jesus Christ and comes to salvation, becomes on the list of Abraham's inheritance. And so his vision went from, I can have a son, or I can have a child of some kind, you know, of one gender or another. That's all the further, you know, I can see that. But God took him outside and said, look at the stars. Do you remember, you ever been out? I remember as a kid, we'd go out and out, not in the, we had a big orchard, but uh, my neighbors, the kid that I grew up with, his yard was kind of sloped and we'd sit, lay in, lay in the grass and we'd, um, look at the stars and, and when the fairgrounds was shooting off fireworks, that's where we would go and watch the fireworks and it's, you wouldn't hear the boom for three or four seconds because they were, it was that far as five miles away or whatever, three or four miles away. And, and we would lay there and watch the stars and those, there was those nights when there was absolutely no clouds, crystal clear, and it just seemed like there was you couldn't fit another star between the stars that were there. There are just so many of them. Like there are just, just infinite number of them. And I believe that's the kind of night that God took Abraham out and said, let's count the stars. That's how many descendants you'll have. And Abraham went, I couldn't even begin. You know, how, how could I ever count those stars? And the other thing about that is, is now we have the knowledge of the fact that the earth rotates and so as as the Earth spins, we're looking at a different part of the the galaxy and a different part of different stars as the Earth rotates, and so his his the number keeps changing, keeps increasing, keeps growing infinitely. He could never see them all 
on any one given night in any one given moment, we never see all the stars that are out there. And so as the, as the night goes on, we're seeing a little bit, you know, the, the stars move across the sky and now these ones start coming visible. And it's like, that's, that's what I mean when God is so good. He is so abundant. He is so, he, he want, he just trips over himself to bless us. He just is so, uh, wanting to, to bless us is that what he was saying to Abraham wasn't just limited to one look up into the sky and go, oh, I can't count them. He was like, no, stand here for a couple hours. And as the sky moves across and new stars come, keep counting. You know, can you count? No, you can't. You can't even count that first glimpse, but I have more for you. I have more. And, and Abraham's vision had to get bigger and bigger. And he changed his name. God said, I want to change your name from Abram to Abraham. Abram was the father of, of, I'm trying to remember what Abram is, but anyhow, Abraham is the father of many nations. And so he started calling himself what God, the vision that God showed him. He changed his name and now he's declaring to everyone, you call me Abraham, the father of many nations. And they go, you don't even have a kid. You have, don't have any offspring whatsoever. And now you want us to declare and call you the father of many nations. And he became that and still is that. And still that keeps increasing every time a person becomes born again, another member of Abraham's inheritance keeps getting added on and added on. All right. So, you got to use your imagination, and that's what God was challenging Abraham to do, was to stand out there and count this and, 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 get, a, and get a vision for this. All right, let me, let me give you some vision stoppers. I think this is important to understand what will stop us from from acquiring the vision that God has for us and then believing and receiving what He has for us. I want to, I want you to think of a train, a big old steel, you know, the big old, uh, steam locomotives. They were massive. I mean, our diesel electric engines that we see going down the train tracks are big and they're super heavy. But these old, um, steam engines were just crazy massive and of the day they were the biggest mechanical device ever built you know so to speak and I know it was right during the um, the um, industrial revolution and they were building machinery so fast that you couldn't keep up with it but but the train was considered something just absolutely weight you know heavy massive and so when we see the vision of God we can look at it and go how you know, that is the step one, the biggest vision stopper we have is that we question how. Because it's not our place to know how, it's our place. How is this great big thing going to move? Because that's the whole idea is to get it moving down the tracks. Well, how is that going to happen? And if we're asking that all the time, God, how is this going to happen? How are you going to do this? I don't, I, I don't understand. I, I can't, you know, I need to know how so that I can believe for this. No, that's not faith. That's just knowing. There's a big difference between knowing something and believing something. If I believe something, I don't have to know it. I don't have to know how. I don't have to understand it. I just need to believe. And that seems like um, that leap, unconditional leap of faith and all that kind of stuff. No, my faith is in the one who made the promise. He made the promise that he would, he would do these things in my life, that he's the one that's putting the vision in me, and he's the one that will fulfill that vision that he's placed in me. So the first vision stopper is keep ask, is asking that question, how? And that will, what will that will cause is that you'll never start. You'll never get the train moving. You'll never move in, uh, uh in, in the vision and believing for the vision that God has for you. The next thing is distractions. And I, with keeping with our train theme here, that's getting derailed. And the devil loves to put distractions in your place. He will cause doubt and concerns and all those questions will come 
And when it's when the vision doesn't seem to be happening overnight, instantly, the way we want everything to happen in our life, then we get distracted from the vision that he has for us. And we get derailed. And when you're derailed, you never get to the end result. You never get to the destination. You're never going to get to the next train stop if the train derails. Now it's going to take a lot of work to get it back on the track, get everything back together, and then get it all moving again. And now we've got even more questions, how? If we get derailed, then the question of how becomes even more, uh, you know, like, how am I ever going to get it back on the track? This thing's, you know, hundreds and thousands of tons of, of steel. How are we going to ever get it put back? And how are we going to ever get this thing going again? And that's what happens with vision. Last thing is weariness. Or we just run out of steam, you know, with keeping with our train thing. You know, we can, we can run, we can get the train moving, we can get, you know, we can, you know, receive our vision and believe for it and, and get things moving along and we can, you know, keep pushing distractions out of the way. But if we just get weary, and this is what the, the devil loves to do, is just wear us out. He wears us out mentally, emotionally, he just keeps pounding away with the doubt, with the contradiction, with it's never going to happen. You're not good enough to receive that big of a vision. You're not good enough to receive something that great from God. He's ne- you know, he may do that for other people, but he's never going to do that for you. And he'll just keep pounding away, pounding away, pounding away, and we just get weary, and we run out of steam, and we just come to a stop. Not a screeching stop, we just kind of just roll to a stop, and there we are. And we don't get to our destination. We don't get to the next train station. We never, nothing ever gets accomplished. The one thing that, that I want to encourage you with this is, with a train like that, the old steam train, what was at the next stop? Two things. Number one, it's where we pick up more people and where we unload what's on, what we have on us. And we reload, you know, Take cargo off and bring cargo on. We take people off and we bring people on in a train. Well, that's what vision does is when we, when we get to the next, when we get to the, the place where the, the vision, the destination that vision is, is that is what we see is that destination. And when we get there, that's not the end because when we get there, now we can, testify and encourage other people. We can get other people on the vision train. We can unload provision and and blessing to other people. We can take on more blessing and more provision that God has for us. And now we can go to the next station and we can be a bigger blessing to more people. We can add on more cars at each stop. And and God, you know, there's there was a whole scenario there that it was going through my mind when I was seeing that. And it was like, that is cool. (laughs) That is cool that that's what vision does is it carries us you know, beyond where we are, we may be where all we are is the locomotive, but when we get to that first stop, now we can add on a couple cars, we can add on some provision, we can add on people, and we can we can share and encourage and, and be a blessing to other people. All right.